Breedy360 here. We're going to try something new. Now, I might make a new channel. I don't know. It's an experiment. We're going to try something called Cooking with Breedy360. I sauteed spinach one time just to test out my uh, tripod, and I had 100 plus views, so maybe I need to make a 360 cooking channel. Doesn't look like there are too many channels out there. I see a few people that cooked one time in 360 or maybe a couple of videos, but not really a full-fledged cooking in 360 video cooking channel. So I'm going to try it with my channel. It'll still be here on Breedy360. If I get an overwhelming response, I'll make a separate channel. You let me know in the comments. I don't know. So here we go. Hope you like that. That was my new intro. I'm testing that out as well. I used Action Director, so I might play around with the intros. You might see something different. I might start adding intros to the regular Breedy360 videos. It's all an experiment. I'm trying to see what makes it look better. It's all about the subscribers. Thank you. Still at 67. Trying to get to 100. Help me out. Subscribe. I'm going to start putting some links in the videos as well, those end screens. Anyway, let's get started. Let's get started. We're going to cook up today something simple. Eggs, bacon, a couple of waffles, some home fries. Now I know what you're saying. These are french fries, not home fries. I got a little trick for you I'm going to show you. Nothing major, but just a little trick to do if you don't have any home fries or you don't feel like slicing up the potatoes really small. All right? Here we go. First, we're going to do the home fries, the french fries, because that'll take the longest. Lay them out on Reynolds Wrap non-stick tin foil. If you don't know what it looks like, it's the tin foil in the yellow package. Non-stick right here. It says non-stick in big. If you use the oven, if you cook a lot, you should already know about this. If you don't, I don't know where you've been. This is the greatest thing in the world right here. Anyway, lay out your home fries right here on the pan. We're going to cook in a little convection oven right there because it's nice and quick. Okay? Preheat it. It should be preheated to about 350, maybe 400. Okay? And we're going to put these in here for probably half hour 45 minutes they're not frozen solid I just got these from the supermarket so they're not frozen solid if they're frozen solid you may want to turn it up to 450 okay let's go next we're gonna cook our maple bacon we're gonna do it in the microwave Oscar Mayer maple bacon very good choice right there it's got you know it's bacon with a little bit of sweetness it's excellent all right we're gonna open this up put about four slices here put it in the microwave for about don't put it on for a total of four minutes, even though that may be our total cooking time. Do it about one minute at a time because sometimes, depending on the power of your microwave, you may burn it and you don't want that, okay? So let's do this. All right, we got the bacon open. We're gonna lay it down. I put some paper towel down. It'll soak up a lot of the grease. Lay it down one, two, Get our third slice and our fourth slice. Now, sometimes people like to cook bacon on the stove. Absolutely nothing wrong with that. I think the microwave is better because if you cook it on the stove, it might cook a little hotter and it'll shrink a little more, maybe burn faster. The microwave does it just fine. Put a paper towel on the bottom to soak up some of the grease. Put it on the top as well. Don't worry, it won't stick to the paper towel. You're not going to have paper in your bacon or anything like that, okay? Let's put this in the microwave. We're going to do this one minute at a time. Okay, we have our home fries cooking. We got our bacon cooking one minute at a time. Next stop is the eggs. All right, next up we have our eggs. One dozen grade A extra large eggs. Of course, I'm not going to make a dozen. I'm just going to put two in here. And our bacon just stopped after one minute. Obviously, it's not cooked, so I know I'm going to put on one more minute. Let that go. The key is to time everything just right. The potatoes take the longest. In reality, you probably should have started that about 15 minutes before you started everything else, but it's okay. We're going to make it work here. With the, with the magic of time lapse and camera and pausing video, it'll be perfect. All right, I cracked my egg on the side of the bowl. No shells are in there, thank God. Another one, forget it perfect. Perfect, we almost had a little shell in there, didn't. We got it perfectly. Okay, now here is a secret in case you didn't know. If you want your eggs a little fluffier, 
All you have to do is add a little bit of milk. Just a little drop. Just like that. Will make your eggs a whole lot fluffier, a whole lot better. Eggs are something funny. They're, they're, so, they're funny. You can't always eat everybody's eggs. Sometimes you go to people's house, they cook eggs for you. It's not that good. It's like tuna fish. You gotta have certain... You have to have it cooked a certain way. I like to use a spoon to scramble it up. I hate the fork because I hate that scratching sound, that high pitch sound like Freddy Krueger. I hate that. So, stir it around with a spoon. As you heard, the bacon just stopped. It's been two, it's been cooked twice for a minute each time on high. So it's still not done. I am gonna check it though. I am gonna check it because it's getting a little better. I'm gonna put on one more minute. Potatoes are cooking. Still going. They probably still need about another 15 to 20 minutes. Eggs are, are scrambled up. We're gonna put these to the side right now. Do not cook these first. These will be last. You don't want to cook your eggs first and have them sitting there and getting cold. Nothing worse than cold eggs. Well, there are things worse than cold eggs, but you get the idea. The bacon has stopped again. It's been three minutes, one minute each on high, one minute increments on high. It has stopped now for the third time. Let's take a look. We have our paper towel. I'm going to have to wipe that up, of course. My wife is going to kill me if I leave grease on the table. Look at that. It doesn't stick to the paper towel. It's fully cooked. It's perfect. Oh, it's hot. Also hot. I should have known that, obviously. What I'm going to do, while everything else is still cooking, I still need about 15 to 20 minutes on the potatoes. The eggs are still waiting to be cooked. You can put them in the refrigerator if you like. I'm going to leave them right here. It'll be fine. It's not like I'm leaving it out all day. It's not like it's burning up hot in here. The eggs will be just fine. I'm going to let this sit in the microwave. Since the microwave is still warm, it kind of incubates in there. When everything is done, I might turn the microwave on for about 10 seconds to warm the bacon back up. But I'm just letting you know in the meantime, it'll be fine sitting there. Potatoes are cooking. Eggs are waiting. Next up, waffles. Here we go. Waffles. America's favorite brand, Eggo Waffles. Who hasn't grown up on this? I don't know. If you didn't, you might not have lived in America. I don't know. Unless your mother was cooking it at home, I don't know. You have a waffle maker. Who knows? You get the idea. I put three waffles down on the non-stick uh, Reynolds wrap. I don't have a toaster. I'm just going to throw it right in the convection oven. I'm going to put it in the oven with the home fries. Now, I just told you the home fries have about 15 to 20 minutes. I'm going to put it in there when there's about 10 minutes left to go. Let this cook for about 10 minutes. Obviously, you're going to keep an eye on it. I might even wait till there's five minutes left because you don't want to burn your waffles. Nothing worse than burnt waffles. Maybe there are, but you get the idea. These home fries, they have about 10 minutes to go. What I'm gonna do, I took them out of the oven. Obviously, I have my oven mitt. Flip them around a little bit. Now, you can use a fork, use uh, tongs, use something. I'm using my hand, okay? Be very careful. It is extremely hot in case you didn't know that things that come from my oven are extremely hot. Be very careful, but I'm going to turn some of these around. Now, I am using a convection oven, so it is still crispy on top, but I'm still going to turn it around a little bit. As you can see, it's non-stick. The Reynolds wrap, it slides right around. If you use regular tin foil, a lot of these could be tearing because they'd be stuck to the tin foil. I'm just going to mix it around a little bit. Flip them over. Space them out again. And back in the oven. We're almost done. I think I'm going to add in the Eggo waffles now. Be careful, the oven is extremely hot. I'm going to put those in there, I'm going to keep an eye on it, and we're going to start scrambling our eggs very soon. Hi, I had to bring you closer to the stove. We're going to cut that. I had to bring you closer to the stove so you can watch me cook the eggs. Now we have our scrambled eggs here, ready to go, I'm just going to scramble it up a little more. You can put salt and pepper in there. I just put a little milk in there. It depends on how you like your eggs. Now I have butter. I know it's unnecessary. I have one of these nonstick pans. If you're conscious about the fat and the calories, you're trying to watch your weight, then you probably don't need the butter when you have a nonstick pan. Otherwise, you would need it otherwise because your eggs would be sticking to the pan. These pans are good. They are legit. I know sometimes people don't question, uh, people question these things and don't believe them when they see this as seen on TV stuff. The pan is good. You can fry cheese in there. It'll slide right off. 
What they don't tell you, though, is that you'll start to get some of these black marks on there that don't come off. I don't really know what that is. Maybe it's residue. I don't know. You have to really scrub hard sometimes to get this off. But your food will slide off of the pan, and that's fine. This was in the dishwasher. There's a little bit of stuff there, but it's part of the pan now. It's fine. Anyway, I am going to slice off a little bit of butter just for flavor, just a thin amount. Just like that. We don't need a whole lot. I already have milk in there. We're going to turn on... The stove, put it on low, I have a gas stove, keep it on low. See the low flame, you can probably barely see it there. Maybe I might turn it to medium. Now, slide around the butter a little bit. Let it melt a little more. Slide it around, not for the non-stick, just to make sure that the butter mixes well with the eggs. Is it unnecessary? Probably. I just like doing it. I'm used to it. If you like to put stuff in your eggs, like bacon or onions and stuff, do so when it's scrambled, so then it'll all cook nice. Like I said, I like to use a spoon because I hate hearing that scratching noise. We're just going to let that sit for a minute. Okay. It's start, as you can see, it's starting to cook. We have it on medium. I might turn it down to low again. And just scramble it up. One important thing I wanted to tell you about the waffles is that I have a convection oven, and you saw me put it in there on the non-stick Reynolds wrap. Uh, you have to, if you're going to use the Reynolds wrap, you have to flip over your waffles, okay? Otherwise, one side will be soggy, the other side will be crispy. If you don't use the Reynolds wrap, then it'll probably be crispy on both sides with a convection oven. If you have a toaster, then totally disregard everything I said. Your waffles will be fine. You can see the eggs are starting to cook now. I'm just going to keep stirring it. I don't like my eggs too runny. As I said, eggs could be a funny thing. If somebody else cooks eggs for me and they're really runny, I don't like that. It's disgusting to me. But if I do it, they're a little runny. It seems better. Is there any reason for that? Any logic behind that? Not at all. If you want, like I said, you can add salt and pepper to it. I'm not going to. No reason for it. Sometimes I do. Right now, I'm just not. As you can see, the egg, as I scrape, the eggs come right off the pan. I don't even have to put too much effort into it. I don't have to sit there and keep digging at it like you may have to in a nonstick pan. And these eggs are almost done. That took a total of uh, three minutes once the eggs hit the pan. I'm just trying to gather it, you see. I can tell my eggs are done because then you start to hear a little more sizzle. I don't know if it's coming through on the camera, but you can hear something sizzle because now it's uh, not running. It's pretty much cooking up, frying, I guess. I don't know if you can hear that. All right, I'm going to turn the oven off. Our eggs are done, our bacon, I'm going to put on 10 seconds. Now that the home fries are done, I told you there's a little trick. You could eat french fries with your breakfast, I don't. Feels like lunch and breakfast, feels like brunch, I don't know, I like to cut it up. So, with your french fries, just chop them up, get little home fries. Simple, easy, you may never make home fries again because it's too difficult. French fries, cut up, cut up, perfect. Sometimes I just use a butcher knife and just, just boom, boom, or a uh, cleaver and just boom, 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 real quick. Right now I got the butter knife, which will work just fine.
there's a little more than I intended. You gotta be careful how much you put on the plate or in the oven, because then you have way more home fries than you intended. You could use any brand of french fries. I was looking for the Orida crispy fries. I could not find them, so I had to get these crinkle cut ones. Or maybe it's the fast fries uh, brand. I also like the Checkers brand of french fries, those orange ones that got the spices on them. Those get nice and crispy. You can cut them up nice. There you go. Instead of french fries, you have home fries. There's still a little more in here that needs to be cut, but I just wanted to show you. I got to get that. I just wanted to show you. There you go. Some home fries. Now our breakfast is ready, and now we're going to put it on a plate. Show you the final presentation. And there you have it. Here's our complete breakfast. We have our waffles, nice and crispy. We have our eggs cooked to perfection, scrambled. Our bacon, perfect and crispy. And our little uh, home fries, our french fries that we turned into home fries. I'm going to enjoy myself. I'm going to have a glass of milk with this. Put a little butter, a little uh, syrup on my waffles. I'm going to enjoy my breakfast. I hope you enjoyed this video. Breedy 360, cooking in 360. Listen, subscribe if you like, but if you like, subscribe.